you'll have had your tea, the doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, the Vampire of the Glen. Hamish, Dougal, you'll have had your tea. Well, no. Splendid, well, uh, splendid. Oh. Then you can get straight to work. You'll be digging over my allotment. And it's the very day for it. Sunny and mild, with a light breeze to lift the kilt. Aye. It's a day with allotment written all over it. Ah. <laughs> Lead us to it. Follow me. Oh. <laughs> uh, your lordship, uh, is your allotment down here? Good lord, no. It's down here. Here we are. An underground allotment. That's a novelty. In here for years. Originally, it was an underground roof garden, but... We thought that was silly, so we <laughs> turned it into an allotment. Uh, well, it's a bit obvious, but it seems to have worked. Well, I'll leave you to it. You'll find spades and forks over there in the potting shed, just behind the old oak tree. <laughs> uh, the tree by the duck pond? No, that big one across the lawn. Oh, yes, I couldn't see it for the greenhouse. Uh... <laughs> I need you to dig out a bed for my sprouts, just here, about, oh, six feet deep. Big enough to take a small, oddly shaped wardrobe. <laughs> well, better get a move on. Forecast said rain. See you later. You're not going to leave us down here in the dark. No, all right. I'll leave you this flaming torch and a spare bloody battery. <laughs> Goodbye. What the? F what was oh, all yes. that about? Oh, Hamish, are you thinking what I'm thinking? No. Does that coffin-shaped wardrobe remind you of anything? Oh, yes. A coffin-shaped sideboard. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Well, whatever it is, let's dig a grave-shaped hole for it and get out of here. Right. And the sooner the quicker. Oh, oh, God. God. Dig. Oh, 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 dig. Dig. Oh, dig away. Oh, dig. 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 Here we are. A cup of tea. Am I right? No, you're right. That's a cup of tea, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Two lumps, Mrs. Nochty. It's rude to point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Where the devil have you been, coming home covered in dust and cobwebs? We have been digging in the laird's underground allotment. Oh, I've heard tell of this. Mrs. McAllister claims he took her down there once and showed her his prize hollyhocks. She was very disappointed. She wanted to see his genitalia. <laughs> and some you lose. I tell you this, it was most disturbing. He had us digging a grave-shaped hole for a coffin-shaped wardrobe. Jings! You may well say jings, Mrs. Nochty, for all the time we were digging, there were strange noises. Well, I was very nervous. <laughs> As was I. And Hamish, did you notice that portrait? I'll never forget it. Good. Then you can remind me what it looked like. <laughs> An ancient picture of a man who was the very embodiment of evil. And the eyes, those eyes, they followed us round the room, out the door and all the way home. From your description, that can only be one man. 
the lad's ancient ancestor, Count Cardula the Tad. Count Cardula, the accordion player. <laughs> Legend has it he was noted for his cruelty. What did he do? He played the accordion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the fiend! <laughs> and they do say he can still be heard on a winter's night when the moon is full and the tide is high and somebody puts on an accordion record. <laughs> Well, heaven knows what the laird is up to. But one thing I do know, none of us will sleep tonight. Oh, not again. You and your elbows. <laughs> it's Amy. She's always grabbing the duvet. That wasn't the duvet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No end to this torment. No. Be gone. Keep me in peace. Shall I have no rest? Will you stop hogging the duvet? It's him. Him and his elbows. Get some sleep. And that isn't the duvet, by the way. <laughs> and those aren't my elbows. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. oh, thank goodness. It was only a dream. Well, now can we all get some sleep? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Dougal. Hey, Mish. I didn't see you behind the cooked meat counter. That's because I'm over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just popped in for a loaf of bread. Then it's your lucky day. Look, buy one, get one free. No, but I only need the one loaf. Well, take the free one. Oh, good thinking. <laughs> Any news of the laird since he disappeared last week? Oh, Amish, to all intents and purposes, the laird has vanished from the face of the earth. Hello, you two. <laughs> oh, the lairdship. This is a surprise. That's very kind of you. I'll open it later. <laughs> oh. Well, there goes the free loaf. <laughs> now, I feel I owe you some explanation for the events of the other evening. Well, here it is. PTO. PS. Well, that all makes perfect sense. <laughs> We should have realised. Everything all right now, your lordship? Oh, yes, the shepherd was very understanding. <laughs> well, good, as long as you didn't have to grease his palm. No, he seemed to be getting on quite well without. <laughs> uh, there is just one thing I don't understand. Why did you get us to bury a coffin-shaped wardrobe in your underground allotment? Ah, Whatever my reason, it had nothing at all to do with the curse that has blighted my family since the days of evil Count Cardula the Cad and the tragedy and suffering he has brought on the House of McCoy. So put all such thoughts out of your minds at once. Bad boy! I told you never to talk to strangers! Sorry, Mother, it won't happen again. Take me to the big hoose before anyone notices you'll drink both voices. <laughs> well, that's cleared that up. What? This ointment I was just putting on. Huh? <laughs> What did the laird want? Oh, I don't know. But I can tell you what does concern me. Have you noticed anything odd about Mrs. Nochte recently? No. Well, take a look. She's here in the trolley. Oh, so she is. Look at her neck. Double chains. Puncture marks. Aye, like two inverted commas. Punctuation marks. <laughs> And you know what this means. Direct speech. Correct. <laughs> but also, the mark of the vampire. Oh, this supermarket music gets more intrusive by the day. 
Well, luckily for Mrs. Nocte, I know exactly what to do. We must drive a stake through her heart and cut her head off. Right, oh. You'll do no such thing. I wear these marks upon my neck with pride, for they are the love tokens from Willie the Clean Easy Man, who pops in once a month and lays out his hardware on the kitchen table. <laughs> You let him bite you? Well, it was either that or buy another chamois and sponge for the car. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, uh, that's as maybe, but the lad still has some questions to answer. Come along to the big hoose. <laughs> uh, May I say what a pleasure it is to have you all here. It gets very lonely in the big hoose. Now, can I fill your glasses? This is no time for party tricks, your lordship. <laughs> no. <sighs> no, once was impressive, but twice is just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to find the truth about that coffin ship wardrobe in your cellar. And I must warn you, I've got a pointed stick. Shall I get you a cushion? <laughs> Very well, you deserve the truth. As you know, I am a dapper character and have long been proud of my coffin-shaped suits. Oh, aye. Your coffin-shaped suits are the talk of the laundry. And I think I see where this is going. Naturally, I kept them in a specially made coffin-shaped wardrobe. I was right. <laughs> However, as you may recall, three weeks ago last Thursday, they suddenly went out of fashion. <laughs> I could never wear them in public again. Filled with shame and determined to get rid of them. Well, you know the rest. Uh, mystery solved. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Who's there? I can hear voices. Who is it? Just a few chums, Mother. Well, get rid of them, you bad boy. Dougal, the lad. He's speaking in two voices. Uh, when he's a mind to show off, there's no stopping him. <laughs> Behave, Mother, or it's back to the cellar you'll go. You wouldn't dare. A boy's best friend is his mother. to the big hoose at this time of night. Hey, get away from me. No, not the teeth, not the teeth. All right, I'll take another chamois and sponge for the car. <laughs> Same time next month, Willie. Cheerio. You'll have had your team. The doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Garden, with Alison Steadman as Mrs. Naughty and Jeremy Hardy as the lad. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Pete Rosser, Kylie Davis, Ros Stephen and Scott Hammond. The producer was John Nixon.